Hi y'all, welcome to my shop. I know a number of you uh, turners, especially newer turners, don't have access to green wood. So I've got a project today using dried wood that might be easier to procure, especially if you're a flat wood uh, turner. And that's, we're going to turn a square bowl from a board. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Joseph Herman who had this article in the now defunct magazine Wood Turning Design back in 2012. So I found this rough piece of uh, cherry board in my scrap pile and cut it on the table saw one inch by three and three quarters by ten. Marked the corners carefully from corner to corner and then marked it with an awl in order to drill on the drill press. I drilled it five eighths of an inch deep allowing for that brad point. My woodworm screw calls for drilling a five sixteenths inch hole and then I use this backer donut uh, to give it a little more strength and I use a uh, washer to take up some of that space since I've only drilled the hole five eighths of an inch deep and the woodworm screw projects three quarters of an inch. I'm using cherry, other hardwoods, domestic hardwoods would work fine, uh, maple would probably do well, maybe fruit wood, probably with coarser grain such as uh, oak or ash you might get a little more uh, chip out on the on the leading edge uh, as you're as you're turning it. Now I've drawn these circles here so I've got a little better idea of, of how wide that recess is going to be. I'm going to use my standard 50 millimeter uh, Nova jaws. I've got left a little room for a, a border here for the, the foot. It gives me just some feel for it. So first thing we're going to do is, is opening this, open this up a little bit with a bowl gouge. I'm just going to remove a little bit of bulk wood and lower that tool, tool rest just a little bit. Coming in, just getting rid of a little bit of waste before I actually make the leaf rest. way to cut that recess is using a skew on its side or you can use a recess tool. So I've made this recess tool. You can find a, I'll have a link up, up above if you want to see how you can uh, grind some other tool to, to make this. But I'm just going to do this in flat and then bring it in close to this line and that will give me that, that appropriate dovetail. not need to be terribly deep, although I think I might want to make it just a hair deeper than that. That's not quite a sixteenth of an inch. About an eighth of an inch ought to be fine. Now I'm going to go ahead and, and, and cut the foot. I want to leave at least a, a good half inch between this dovetail and outside here so it's got enough strength for it so it won't blow it out. going to go down about an eighth of an inch though that lets me know from looking at the outside how deep this is makes it measurement a little easier so I don't blow through it on the other side.
is not a bevel rubbing cut. I'm pretty much using the tip and just removing some of this waste wood. few ripples but we'll clean that up uh, in a little bit. Now it helps if you've got a template that you can uh, draw on the side so you can kind of match that template. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So you're going to develop a template that you can trace to the uh, outside and give you some idea where you're going to be going with this, this thing. So you can see where I've traced this with, with a marker so I've got some feel for where it's going to go. It's going to go a little deeper here and then fan out. I've got a little more of an OG here, then we'll come back with a scraper. shear scrape, smooth out some of these rough spots. So I'm going to use a negative rate scraper and use the more flat bevel. some rough edges here. I think I'm going to switch to a skew as a native rake scraper. So I've got this one with a bit of a profile and I think that will, it's heading in the right direction. My square scraper is going in the other direction so it's a little harder to get it fixed right. Most of the tool marks, I got just a bit of a tear out here. I could probably put a little uh, wax, paste wax in here and clean it up a little bit more, but I don't think it's that bad that I can't deal with with the uh, sanding. I need to clean up a little bit here. My tool rest extended beyond the wing so I don't have to worry about getting myself caught in the, uh, the propeller. Uh, I'm liking that shape. That's not too bad. I'll worry about cleaning this up when I reverse, reverse turn it. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and sand this now with the lathe off. I scrubbed it with the grain with an 80 grit to get rid of the uh, tool marks and a little bit of a tear out. That way I had some control. Now I'm going to come back with a little 120 grit and do some hand sanding. Turn on my dust collector here. Okay, I sand on the bottom through all the grits, but I also go between grits with each grit. I go with the grain vertically, get rid of any of those radial scratches. Okay, I'm going to texture the band here. I'm going to use my uh, 
small texturing system. I'm going to have it vertical to the, the wood. I've drew, drawn a band that comes out to the edge and I'm going to put just a tiny little V groove there after I texture. So I've got the speed turned down. Just going to come in right next to the edge. And that gives me a very nice looking textured band. Now I'm going to come in with my point tool and border that a little bit. So I've got to get the speed up a little bit. Before I was at 450, now I want to get it up over 1000. Just come in very deliberately with a flat up on this point tool, right there where the pencil mark is. Now let's check it out. It comes off the edge here, almost off the edge here. We're going to sand this down a little bit, so that's, that's fine. And I think I want to come in right there in the corner and put a little shadow line as well. Now it's framed on both sides. I like that. It adds a nice little detail. I'm going to use a little green Scott abrasive pad to get rid of those little frizzies. And we've, we've done with this. We're going to turn it around one more time and finish the, finish the bottom. But I'm going to go ahead and take it off, reverse turn it, do the other side. Take the woodworm screw out. I got this size right. It will just fit in there. And it does. I'll press in the middle and snug it up. Don't turn it so high you're gonna you're gonna break it. Let's just mark that. Let's draw a circle so I know how big. That's going to be. That's uh, smaller than I would like, but I'm afraid that if I use a larger set of jaws, I'm not going to be able to put this bead around the outside. Let me look at that. The next size up jaws I've got are these 75 millimeter bowl jaws, but when I put those in there, you can see I really don't have room. I barely got room for a bead. Then I wouldn't be able to texture on the outside. So I'm going to have square walls here for aesthetics. I don't want a dovetail, but I'm going to hold it with my uh, normal jaws with the external dovetail, and it'll hold just fine. So I'm going to just go in, oh, maybe uh, a little over an eighth of an inch to make a flat. I'm going to go down even deeper, deeper than that, um, because I'm going to make a little bead right here. Let's mark that bead. So that'll be the bead. So I'm going to do just a little bit of hollowing with the bowl gouge initially, then I'm going to develop that profile for reverse chucking. So I bring this out 45 degrees. Develop the outside of this bead 
bring this down a little bit. Now I'm going to do a push cut. I'm going to roll this over. Let it bounce on the back. So I don't hear it tick. And then bring it in just slightly. That's cleaned it up quite a bit. I think I can still get in there with a uh, negative rate scraper again. I think probably the skew. Come in here and clean that up. touch and that's a pretty clean cut I'm happy with that nothing that sandy can't uh, can't finish dealing with now I've got to refine this bead I think to do that I'm going to use the point tool just bring that around as a scraper. This side, bring it around and refine it just a little bit. with the bottom I'm going to use the 80 grit and really scrub it with the grain look for any tool marks before I do any final sanding with a uh, power sander at, at 120 and finer grits I sanded around the bead by hand with 120 I didn't want to get too aggressive with that uh, I just need to smooth it out a little bit Notice I use how I use the sander similar to the way I'd use a bowl gouge. I kind of brace it into my hip and use my body. Now remember, we drilled the hole 5 eighths of an inch deep. This is 1 inch, so I've only got 3 eighths inch minus the eighth of an inch uh, recess on the bottom. So I've only got about a quarter of an inch. Uh, bottom, so I've got to be very careful hollowing this out, make sure I don't blow through. Now I need to leave that ledge, so I'm going to go ahead and reestablish the edge of that ledge with this scraper. That's about all the 
bowl I'm going to have. Okay. All I got to do is sand that inside. 120 grit. Being mindful of where my hands are. Slow the speed down to maybe old half of what it was before. I also got this little edge of this ridge I've cut up a little bit with a sander, sanding paper I need to clean up. Okay, again I'm going to texture. I'm going to make uh, three small grooves on the outside. So my texturing band, again, is not going to be very wide. Let me just mark, carefully mark where it's going to be. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and put a point tool and make that mark so I can kind of control a bounder of where my, my texturing is going to go. Speed up a little bit, over a thousand. Come straight in. While I'm at it, I'm just going to go ahead and make Other grooves. Okay, I'm going to start with it straight on. Let's see what it looks like. That's looking pretty good. I think I'll almost stop there. Sometimes less is more. And I think I'm going to come in with that point tool just on the inside there and put just a little bit of a um, tiny little V groove right in there. It's kind of a shadow line. You know, we're going to get speed up again over a thousand. Just that light a little bit so you can see. Time to now reverse it, clean up the bottom. Just snug it up. I don't want to leave marks. That'll hold it because I'm only going to do a little bit of cleanup work here. Sand the bottom and add a little uh, texturing detail. Now I mentioned you want all these edges nice and crisp. You don't want them rounded over. So you could uh, uh, use a hand plane. You could use a jointer. Uh, I'm going to use this trick I've showed before, where I use a piece of uh, MDF substrate with a glued piece of grit, just trying to keep it 90 degrees. Just clean up that side a little bit and crisp up those edges. And there I am. I'm happy with that. All I've got to do is sign my name to it and put some uh, my favorite finish, Minwax Antique Oil. If you're interested in that video on Minwax Antique Oil, click here. Y'all stay safe. Come on back here.